Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to tie a couple of the more complex controls together. Um, a combo box and a grid. So let's start with uh, our data layer. I created under our data layer. Give me a second. I created access to a new generic list. If you take a look at it, this is a link to SQL query. I'm joining the membership view to a view called users and roles and the roles table or the roles view. So what I'm looking for is give me for a given list for a given role, give me a list of the users that are in that role. And the and the user attributes I'm gonna I'm gonna return are these. And, and basically that comes right from the context of that view. So every one of those columns is available to me. I inherit that or excuse me, I call that from my BLL layer right there. So I'm looking for for a given role, passing back the membership users. And I'm using that you know what, I want to keep this one up just because I want to show you what I want to try to do later. Right there. I'm I'm using that in a form called test form one. I have it under a new folder called sample controls. And what I'm going to do is if I do proof of concepts, I'm going to drop a new form in here and give you the new scenario just so not to interrupt with anything else. So let's take a look at test form one. Under test form one, I've got uh, my script manager, which you need to run, you need the script manager to run any of the, any of the Telework controls. Just drop this one line of code. It's in, sort of an Ajax control. I've got a drop down called RDD roles two. Don't worry about the name, but uh, I try to DD to me means um, uh, drop down. I'm terrible at naming conventions, but that's a drop down. You notice when when I do the drop down, I have an event called on selected index changed. So I'm listening for that event. Selected in exchange is when you change the drop-down value, what happens. Auto post back a true. We want, now I, I'm not showing you anything to do with Ajax yet. So if I don't put auto post back as true, if you were to change the view, or change, excuse me, change the, the item in the drop-down, then I won't fire anything. So for right now, we're going to use the server-side control and fire the auto post back uh, so we can do something when the when the items changed now I have a grid I didn't do much in the grid yet I mean there's a thousand options you can do in the grid but I just have something very simple I've got two columns in the grid username and user ID and I'm pulling username and user ID from the number of fields that I have here and I'm gonna, I, I want to show you what it would look like if I try to add one more and let's see what would be an interesting field to show um, last login date is a good one let's see last login dates here so I'm going to show, I'm going to see what it would take to put last login data in. I'll go to the split view. And what, what I see here is the top side is the ASP code and the bottom side is what it would render as. I'll go to the smart tag, go to edit columns. I'm going to add a date time column. And the data, the data field, I forgot already, what was the data field? <laughs> Sorry. You know what I usually do is I, I put it on my my clipboard so I don't forget. So anyway, let's go back into it. Go to edit columns, date time, data view. I'm going to drop that in. I'm not going to give any formats yet. Just that's what, what we're going to do for now. Okay. Now, I have it done in the in the in the uh, ASP page, so I shouldn't have to change anything in the back end. The back end is the the code behind page. Now let's take a look at the code behind. Um, simple again what I have is under my page load I've got a bit of code here that says if it's not a post back in other words it's the initial get populate that that um, drop down and that comes from uh, the roles BLL list ASP roles and this one is the role selected change so as I change the item in the selected change it's going to fire this bit of code it's going to call the data source as this and bind the data and that bind command says, uh, let's marry up every one of these columns with every one of these other data fields. Uh, where's the data field at? Here's the, the data fields actually under, here we go, data field, username, user ID, and last login date. Let's see what happens when I run it. Now, I already had it, but I'll show you how to do it. Volunteer, 
I have a set a startup project. One of these guys is set a startup project. It's late. I'm sure I'm going over it. I'll try that again. Volunteer. Set a startup project. I'm running it, so it won't let you change when you're running it. Set a startup project. And under test form one, I'm going to right click it and say set a startup form. And again, I'm probably running the damn thing. Let's see. Let's go up to this. Set a start page. Excuse me. All right, so I'm going to run it in Google Chrome. Let's see what happens. I expect to see two vanilla plain old controls. It's the best way to learn how to do this in, in isolation. So no master pages, no other code to to, to trip over. It's running. It's it, it it. This seems like it's taking a long time, but it's actually compiling. So it's doing a build and run. Do, 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 do. It's going out and looking at the database. If this was normal, by the way, I would I'd be running a profile against it to see if there's any any uh, any stops or any. Oh, it should be running. Maybe I have a breakpoint. Oop. Let's try this again. I don't like the way that did that didn't start already. I'm building. I've got three succeeded, four up to date. So the rebuild happened. Okay, I'm a little concerned that this is not running as planned. Let me pause for one sec. I'll be right back. Oh, let's see. The network path was not found. That's not a good sign. I think uh, my friend on the other, on uh, the other side of the world was making changes. It's having a difficult time connecting to my database. It looks like or. Let me pause. I'll be back when uh, when I get this connection issue resolved. Sorry about that. I'm back. Uh, yeah, it seemed to be just a connection issue. Um, my code was right. <laughs> uh, back to where we were. Let's let's stop stop it and start it again. Um, I'm gonna run it. And let me shut this guy down. Okay, so I've got two rolls. And again, there's nothing special about this grid and and drop down. So don't. Uh, Okay, so volunteer, it just so happens that volunteer, I don't have any records in the grid, so it's showing no records to display. But under admin, good old George Foreman's there. I've got a user, a user ID, and date. Now, I can do whatever I want from this point. I can add columns. I can uh, add buttons within the grid. I mean, it's it's sort of wide open, what you can do from here. The, the trick, the key is, on the presentation side, there's not much to it. Uh, you you pick your data source, you bind in your back end, and then your front end, you have your your columns. As a matter of fact, even if you wanted to, you could uh, you could have the columns generated at runtime. So, for instance, if I went here and said um, on the smart tag, if I said auto generate columns at runtime. Now I'm curious what would happen if I have three columns that I put myself so let's see what happens if I run this again as there's like 17 columns so there may be a jumbled mess let's see what happens okay under volunteer I should have nothing under admin, there we go. So uh, again, generated runtime. Uh, these are the three that I put. So what it did was it generated every column and <laughs> added them to the end of mine and generated. So so George Foreman's there twice. Um, 
I honestly, this is a preference thing, but I like doing it myself. I like I like having control over what column is what, because nine times out of ten, when you're in the column itself, if you're generating a runtime, it it limits you as far as what you can do with edits and so forth. So if I wanted to change the format of create date, if it's generated at runtime, it's funky. If I wanted to do it manually, it's it's relatively easy. Um, but interesting. Uh, it didn't take much. I mean, if you if 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 it were a simple grid that I know I didn't want to override with changes, then it literally is a couple lines of code, as long as you have your data layers straightened out. Um, and it's pretty quick, I think. But, uh, so so what did we learn here today? Two, one, um, how to do a link to SQL query with a join. That's a cool thing. Got a couple of join statements in there. It looks very, very similar to, uh, to SQL. Another thing we learned is what happens when we have event-driven uh, controls. In other words, I have a drop down that I'm changing, and as I change, I want something else to happen. That's under the selected index changed, and you can see that the the drop down is going to affect the grid. Pretty cool stuff. In the front end, I added three columns, and then at the end of the day, I said I'm going to uh, give my own columns. One of these things says auto generate. I'll find it in a second. Figures it's not in front of me. Trust me, it's there, but I can't see it. Auto generate columns is there, and it's it's generating those columns on the fly based on the context, based on what it's it's fed in the D in the BLL. Excellent. Uh, next one's going to be uh, another complex control. Uh, for right now, I'm going to. I'm going to remove my, th you know what, I'm going to remove that option with the auto-generate, and I'm going to not develop anymore in test form one. I'm going to create another form for the next example. Thank you.